The sights on it are just factory, which is pretty lame. The, the uh, magazine release button here is a lot uh, chunkier than on my last Glock, and I really, really like that. So the slide release is ambidextrous on both sides. The safety is ambidextrous on both sides. The Nintendo Zapper Ruger LCP, my Wolverine LCP2. This is a variant of the gun that John Wick used in John Wick 1. He used a P30L, so it's a little bit longer. But you can see the 38 Special along the top, and it looks like it did almost as much damage as the 38 Special, even though the bullet's only about half the size. Shoot her! Yes! For science. Ho <laughs> <laughs> oh ho! <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be working a little bit more on the Beretta 92FS, and we're going to start uh, working on the upgrades that I had discussed in one of my previous videos. Uh, I had mentioned that the trigger pull, the double action trigger pull on this gun, is very long. and weighs a ton. Uh, I don't have one of the little measuring stick thingies on me, but uh, I believe the trigger pull for that double action is over 10 pounds, which is a little ridiculous. So as much as I like that double action for a safety feature, I don't want that to be uh, quite so heavy of a pull. So what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing the uh, hammer spring in this gun today. So that's what we're doing in this video. So for starters, we're going to need to unscrew the grips. So we're going to start with that. And for those of you watching this channel, all of my stuff is always done in real time. Just so that you know exactly how long it's going to take to complete this project. Okay, so there's one grip. It came out pretty easily. Go around to the other side. Oh, and for you sticklers out there, almost forgot. The gun is empty. The gun is clean. It seems to be a thing on YouTube where people complain about that, but whatever. Moving on, we're going to get together a grip off of there. Their grip is off. Okay, now comes the tricky part. This little loop here at the bottom, we need to put pressure on that and then poke out that little rod there. Based on uh, other YouTube videos I have seen, that is going to be very difficult. So let's just see how this goes. I think I'm going to need a hard surface to push this down on. So let me step off the camera here real quick and see if I can get this to work.
course we have no luck. I've been using a toothpick. I think I'm going to need to use something a little bit more extreme to get this out of here. So we're going to go ahead and cut and see if I can find something else that will get the job done. Okay, so that ended up being a huge pain in the butt. Here's the little pin that comes out from this spot right here. Uh, basically, I had to have help to apply enough pressure to this ring to uh, have somebody else hit this thing with a mallet and push it out of there. And then we had to pull it out with pliers. So, this is probably going to be a two-person job, in spite of what other videos might tell you. But uh, be prepared for a bit of a workload there. So, now we're going to pull this piece out. Which, you know, should come out pretty easily. And then there is our spring that we're going to be replacing. Now, that's just going to slide right out of there. And there it is. Now, you're probably not going to be able to see it on camera. But there's a little rod down in the middle of this hole. There we go. And you need to put the new spring over that rod. So, here's our new spring. This is a official Beretta D spring that I got off of eBay. And as you can see, it's a little bit shorter than the one that was in there. So that's where uh, our trigger action gets improved. So we'll go ahead and put that one over there. And then uh, we'll find that rod and slide this down over that rod, like that. And then we're going to put this thing back in. Now hopefully, with the other spring in there, we're going to get a lot less resistance than what we had before. So I might just be able to push it back in there on my own. And that's going to be a negative. So, I'm going to need to go and get some help again. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down like that. And then I'm going to drive that uh, peg back in there. So, I'm going to get some help to do that, and I'll be right back. Alright, so with two people, I was able to get the D-spring back in there. And get our little uh, uh, knob here hammered back in. But man, was it a pain. Even with the, the lighter spring, it still took an awful lot of pressure to get that done. Uh, in spite of what you might see on YouTube from other people doing this, it is definitely going to be a two-person job, and you're going to have to be very, very careful to not damage the frame of the gun when you're hammering away at it. So, definitely something to keep in mind. However, that being said... Huge, huge difference in the trigger. I can't believe the difference that putting in that new spring made. Totally worth it for 11 bucks. Now, supposedly, it also uh, increases the single action. So let's take a peek at that. Still got that slop in there that uh, all Berettas have at the trigger pull. Honestly, I don't notice that much difference between uh, the single action trigger pull from before and uh, this new spring. But the double action is considerably lighter. So I'm very happy with that. It was worth the money. So, that being said, let's put the gun back together so we can get this over with. I'll probably just keep that uh, other spring as a backup or maybe sell it or something. So, I'm getting the grips back on here. I gotta say, I'm very happy to have this gun back in my possession. Uh, the Beretta 92 FS was the first gun I ever bought back when I was 19 years old. I'm not even sure you're even allowed to own a handgun at the age of 19 anymore. But back then you could, as long as you bought it from a private seller and not from a gun store. Well, I was really, really excited about getting this. I'd just seen Lethal Weapon 4, which is still one of my favorite movies of all time. 
and uh, just had to have this gun. However, looking back, I just want to say that I was a very irresponsible gun owner at that time, even though I uh, got my concealed handgun license right away when I turned 21. I did not bother to properly educate myself about gun operation, gun safety, uh, trigger control, any of that stuff. And uh, I was young and stupid with this gun, and I should not have owned one. So, folks in Oregon, please take that to heart. If you're going to own a gun, educate yourself on its safety, its features, how to take it apart, how to clean it, how to shoot it safely and accurately, and uh, all that good stuff. Um, you can get your concealed handgun license in this state of Oregon by sitting through a four-hour class. You never actually have to handle the gun. You don't have to prove that you can fire it accurately or safely. You sit there, you fill out some paperwork, and when you leave the class, you can have a gun. Imagine what uh, life would be like if they did that with cars and how many people would be dying. So all I'm saying is practice, learn how to safely operate the gun, and educate yourself. And uh, now that I'm older and wiser, I gotta say, I still love this gun. Is it better than my Glock 17? Well, time will tell. I'm going to go out to the range and shoot both of these and uh, decide which one I like better. But uh, simply based on the double action that this gun has, that's a really, really nice safety to have. I never use this safety, incidentally. But if you carry it with the hammer down like this, this is a very safe gun. So, just something to keep in mind for you guys that like Glocks out there. I would not recommend that as a first gun. If I was going to do this over again and I was 19 again, and I had to buy my first gun, I'd actually probably get Roger Murtaugh's gun, the old 4-inch uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, revolvers are very practical because you don't have to worry about them jamming. All you got to do is pull the trigger again if the gun doesn't fire. You've got that nice double action for safety. So even if you're a newbie and you get a little uh, fidgety with that trigger, it's not going to go off unless you give it a really good yank. So just something to think about. I think a revolver is a, a very nice first gun. And then uh, once you master that double action trigger, single action is a breeze. So, just something to think about if uh, you're in the market for buying a new gun. But anyway, that's how you uh, change out the hammer spring in this Beretta 92 FS. It was quite the chore. Be prepared. But uh, totally worth it. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope everybody has a great day.